Welcome everyone, this is Dark Geese. I have a new camera right now and I'm using this to record what I did with the KOF Cup. I, you know, I'm gonna do with what is now known as the Latin American Cup. And I call it the Latin American Cup because basically Mexico vs. Peru makes you think it's just about Mexico vs. Peru, but the bottom line is that it's more than just Mexico vs. Peru. So we are, you know, Brazil is going, Brazil is a number, you know, two country in all of South America, I heard in 2002 and Peru is number one so this is bigger this is more like a Latin American Cup and so with that being said I would like to take this opportunity to interview people and see what's gonna happen just like the KOF Cup this is this is big this is groundbreaking stuff uh, it's the stuff that changes you know people and you know people have to understand even though I upload these videos with Emil and stuff Emil is no longer my main focus like it was before I just I like to educate people and show people around the world you know, there's bigger things that, you know, there's skill around the world. It's not, again, just limited to one region, not Mexico, neither Japan. It's uh, bigger than that. So uh, my work is more much bigger than just that one guy anymore. And so, um, well, but, you know, there's a hundred and some comments on that anyway. So I don't want to spend too much time on that right now. I can I'd always do that for when I do my official update. And I show you all the actual Latin American Cup lo logo. When I show you all that... Then, you know, I can talk about that whole, that video or whatever, but not right now, please, no. Right, first thing, I've had the pleasure of interviewing the Buchecha, uh, who is uh, now, uh, he's retired officially from King Fighter 2002. He is uh, one of Brazil's top players he was back in the day. Very good player. Uh, you know, we'd always had dreams of seeing Kula and all them versus Buchecha and Salado, as you saw the video that I uploaded and from Battle for Mexico, which, you know, obviously jump-started this whole thing right now. Uh, so I had an opportunity to interview him and I basically, you know, just asked him one question and he gave me such a thorough answer on that one question that it was no need to ask him anything else. <laughs> and so uh, basically I had an opportunity to, uh, to interview Buchecha and um, I'm going to read this and so I can see what y'all, you know, what y'all, you guys think about it. And basically what this is, I asked him was, why did you retire? And, you know, basically, you know, I must, you know, highlight a little of this. Uh, my father led me into the pinball machine to, to play some little games, and I grew up loving my father. Even though I am past the end of the week with him, when I was 11 years of age, and my father was interned in the hospital, and, uh, and the, the, the doctors were saying to me that my father was going to die. He, the last day of his life has already passed, and that he was going to die. And, uh, and that, and you know, his aunt would always take him, take him, take him to church when he was a little boy. So this is, you know, a Buchecha's, you know, story basically of, you know, uh, going through his 11 years old to now. And so he's telling me because I asked him why he retired. And he just gave me a whole, you know, bit of storyline. He said his father was a drug user of cocaine, and he injected that in his veins. And you know, he still loved his father very much. But uh, the doctor said that his mother, you know, that the doctor said for his mom to be prepared because he wouldn't you know that he's gonna die and then you know uh, basically you know when the doctor told or his mom said that basically his father would not live any longer he says that he went to his house as a little kid and he was crying and praying for God to save my his father and you know so his father lived another day and then he says uh, the next day his father passed away and then you know he said you know, when he was 13, he put, put, put a box of shoe shiner in the back and, you know, he, he says that God told him to, you know, not to save his father. He's going to be equal to his father, basically. And so he put the, he, fought, he faulted God for his father dying. He blamed God for his dad dying. And so uh, basically, yeah, his father passed away doing cocaine. And so he, you know, he told himself he was going to be just like his father. And then moving on. You know, he said, uh, he also, he said he was going to smoke and use drugs just like his dad did. And his father let it, you know, and his, his father led him to the pinball machine. And so he began to play games also. And then he says, as yes, time goes along, he was living his life in drugs and playing pinball, playing the pinball machine at 14 years of age. And I guess it's Golania. Maybe that's part of Brazil. I'm not very certain right now. Uh, and, you know, he's talking about how he used to play the championships of X-Men and Marvel superheroes and all them and yeah basically he said you know 
he he wanted to be the best at all that so he could make his father proud. And you know, he says he earned he many won many tournaments in Golania and in various different games like X-Men vs. Street Fighter, King of Fighters 96, and Street Street Fighter Alpha 2, Bomberman 4, and a bunch of games. He began and then, he, and then King of Fighters 2002 hit. And he said, you know, each place he went to play people, he he drank and you know, took did drugs and went to risky places like in Rio de Janeiro. And he went to all the you know the the uh, the pushing the hoods and stuff, just to you know get drugs basically. And he went to Sao Paulo and Cracolandia, which is, I guess a place for drugs, other risky places, and everywhere he said he went to get drugs. And he says he was in you know in the early morning. He says the, uh, he felt like you know God was telling him something. And you know, when he was in Buenos Aires, you know, in Argentina, he says he also used drugs then. He says in Lima, Peru, he was also in risky places, you know, getting drugs and you know stuff like that. And he's saying that you know he was basically just getting lucky, and he just felt like at all that time, you know, that he felt like God was by his side and protecting him, who he said who is a Jehovah God. He says, and you know. He was protecting him because, and you know, because of all the stuff he was risking, and he's saying basically, you know, uh, he feels I'm trying to, you know, like I said, go through more of this stuff. Um, he feels like, you know, last year in June, he says he was barely alive after he's talking about, you know, how his father. He felt like the demons killed his father. You know, he feels like la he says last June he was barely alive because the drugs was in him was killing him, you know, and dragging him out in the early morning. And, you know, he barely alive and he felt like when he, he got a, you know, a blessing from God, basically, and told him to stop doing drugs. And so he stopped doing drugs. And, you know, it looks like what he became, he became a Jehovah's Witness. And so he's telling me that he got baptized last year on December 26th. And, you know, he basically says he's changed his life, you know, and that, you know, being as a Jehovah's Witness, he has to you know, has to abandon everything that he used to do. So, you know, no more drinking, no more smoking, uh, no drugs. You know, uh, video, he dropped in video games entirely, all that. And so basically, Buchecha says that he is now a man of God. And so uh, basically, that's what he's telling me. You know, you have to drop everything, you know, because uh, he's now a man of God. And so that's what he wanted to make sure people know. Because, you know, obviously, from our point of view, we'd wonder why wouldn't he show up? Buchecha show up. You know, uh, if, if we, if, you know, cool on them, went that far for the tournament, you know, why wouldn't Buchecha show up? And, you know, he knew, but Buchecha knows cool on them are going to show up. But, you know, he says again, he says he is a man of God right now. So he is a changed man. Buchecha, don't, exp you know, I guess as a whole, I guess you could not expect to see Buchecha at the Latin American Cup, which again, that's the name of the tournament, the Latin American Cup 2011. You know, makes it with Peru as a subtitle. So I'll let Angel Strong and them use it. But the name of the tournament is. The Latin American Cup. That's what it is. And so basically, guys, this explains why Buchecha is now retired. He is now a totally different man. I'm hoping I can get a hold, hold of Salado. And there's a lot more stuff to come on, come after this. Like, you know, a lot of matches from Luis Cha's place and stuff like that. And there's going to be, there's going to be a, from here until probably two to three months after this, guys, there's going to be a lead up of matches and events and all kinds of stuff I'm going to be posting on my channel. Even probably some Geese Tower matches next week or whatever. Leading up to everything. Just so that, you know, everybody can, you know, see what's going on. And, uh, you know, get ready for that event. So, uh, basically that's it, guys. You know, you're going to see more interviews like this. Just like, just like I did with the KOF Cup. I hope you all have enjoyed everything so far. Please know uh, comments overall about the Emil thing. I'll do that when I do my update video. And show the actual design of the Latin American Cup. So I can show the design. I'll, I'll do that. We can talk about that then. But otherwise, that's 80 some comments. You know, <laughs> that's a lot of comments about one person. But um, that's about it, guys. Um, hope y'all enjoyed this interview with Buchecha. I want to say thank you, Buchecha, for giving me the time to do this interview with you. I wish you the best of luck. And uh, we will see what happens at um, the Latin American Cup uh, in three weeks, guys. All right, I'll talk to y'all later. Bye.